Hello and welcome to the Rogue Monkey podcast and episode 35. My name is Kevin Picard. Today we're heading to sunny Spain as we join Jose Enrique, former Liverpool star and one of the directors at Amplified Coaching Online. This is the second part of a two-part special and we were joined in our last episode by Steve Butler. Make sure you head back and check that one out if you've not done so already. Just before we get started, we would really appreciate it if once you finish with today's show, you can give us a quick rate and review as it helps capture your thoughts on our discussions. So today we hear from a former professional footballer who explores his journey from humble beginnings through to being at one of the most recognised sports teams on earth. We explore the challenges of being in professional sports and his personal challenges both physically and mentally following retirement and how he's now found new purpose in his venture with Amplified Coaching Online. The conversation today provides some extremely honest, candid and thought-provoking statements as we pull back the curtain into the life of a professional footballer. So, let's get into it and episode 35 of the Road Monkey podcast. The journey of Amplified Coaching Online, Applying Passion to Business, Part 2, A Conversation with Jose Enrique. Hello, Jose. How are you doing? Welcome to the show. Hi, Kevin. How are you? All good yep. here. Excellent. Well, thanks for sharing some time with us today. We've already spoke to your business partner, Steve, and we're going to explore your journey a little bit and then get into that. But if you can just give us a quick introduction, who you are uh, and kind of your journey so far. Well, my name is Jose Enrique. Uh, I'm an ex-footballer now. I, I, I wish I was still a footballer, but I'm not, you know, and... <laughs> And obviously, just my journey, uh, well, I just obviously retired. I started being an agent as a football agent. It takes me a little bit to get used to it, to be honest. And then we just built a company that's well, it's called Amplify Coaching Online uh, with Steve, like you mentioned. And we're actually building, building up now everything. So let's go back all the way to your sporting journey where it started. What's kind of your earliest memories of getting into the kind of sporting world? Was it as a child, I assume? Yeah, it was with six years old, actually. In my time, now you actually with six years old, you can play football in these teams that you play against each other. When I was young, when you were six, the minimum was eight years old. So what we did, actually, I can say now, we did, did like a fake ID because I was big, you know? So we did like a fake ID, like I was eight and I could play. So I played actually with eight years old, being six. And actually just started there, actually in the team of my town that is called Serranos. That is actually 10 minutes walking from my parents' live, you know? And, and I started there and then just keep growing little by little. And, and then obviously I get into the Premier League and my dream came, came true, you know? So, I mean, picking up on some of the stuff we spoke with Steve about, like, you're so driven in what you do. And, and that must have come from, I guess, the early parts of your sporting journey to become so passionate and chasing your dreams. Kind of, have you got anything you can think back to where that all started? Yeah, for me, since, don't get me wrong, in, in, in some points, like, we are all, we are all 14, 15 years old. And you silly, you start to, I, I never drink alcohol in my life, actually, but I've been used to go out with my friends because that's what you do at age. And, and, and in one point you say, oh my God, I'm spending a lot of time doing football. I really, and obviously it was my dad actually helping me as well at the same time say, Jose, just keep pushing because you really have the talent, just keep going. That actually is going to happen. So we have our low moments in some point that you doubt and if actually, because I remember uh, we used to have that we used we still do you know my parents they still do have an apartment outside of Valencia that is uh, with a pool you know community pool and the beach actually 100 meters away and I used to go there for three months in the summer uh, with all my friends so we used to be like maybe 30 40 people in total so imagine me going in the morning very early in the morning waking up traveling to Buñol that is Levante's training ground uh, when I was that age, uh, 14, 15, 13, that is 45 minutes driving away. So 45 minutes driving, training, come back, sleep, wake up, go, come back because training in the morning, in the afternoon. And at the same time, you are right there and you see all your friends, 
on the pool, you know, together, you know, with obviously the girls and, and all of that, you know, as well at that age, you know, and, and enjoying themselves, you know, and you are like, wow, I'm doing all of this. And I'm, at the moment, yeah, I love it, you know, but actually I love the games. Precision, no one likes precision, you know? So, like I said, in some points, you're like, oh, I would love to spend more time with my friends that actually play football, you know? And, but when you arrive to that age, obviously growing up, I loved it, you know? And, and I, when I arrived at that age as well, I always loved football, but it's your low moments as well that you're doubting, even with the talent or the qualities, you're doubting like, oh, I'm spending too much time in this. I'm really going to make it. It's going to be really worth it. But all came from that, you know, from my parents as well helping me. And, and since then, you know, became a footballer. It's always been something that whatever I put my head into it, I give my 100%. I, I don't believe you should start something if you don't want to give you 100%. Then it can happen that it doesn't work. It can happen in life, you know. It cannot everything work out the way you want to work out, you know. So, but what you can do, give you 100% and try. And if it works, I really believe if you give your 100% and the people you're working with, they do give their 100% as well. I really believe you have a big chance to make it successful. That's, that's why I always give my 100%. I think that's it's really interesting because obviously there's a huge volume of people that aspire to make it to, for example, the Premier League, but perhaps only see the last little bit, you know, the bit on TV at the end and don't see all of the other stuff to get there. And were there moments along the way where you not necessarily questioned yourself, but you just had to overcome real challenge and adversity to get to the point where actually you did get to the Premier League and you kind of thought, wow, it was worth going through all of that. Yeah, exactly. Like you said, at the end, listen, we are all human beings. I know sometimes they put uh, footballers like they are something else, you know, because uh, we, they are that much on TV and they are that much in social media and in the papers and everything that sometimes, and more kids, you know, with 14, 15, they believe, oh my God, they are. Oh, it's, and when they see you, I remember so many people shaking, taking pictures with you and things like that. And it's, and it's incredible that they feel, you know, like that excited, you know, to meet you. And it's incredible, but like I said, we are all, our struggles, we all have them, you know, and, and I've been 14, I've been 13, 15, you, you know, that's the silly age of a young, uh, of a young guy, you know, and, and it's moments that you say, I don't fancy to go to training now, look, my friends are on the pool, I really need to push to go, and then who is going to tell me that I'm going to make it, because maybe I put all that effort on it, and maybe I, I am 18, 19 after, and I don't make it, or 20, or 21, 22, whatever, and I don't make it, and all them years I've been pushing it, how much time I lost with my friends, you know? So obviously we all doubt about everything. And you, I'm sure you ask any footballer or ex-footballer, they doubt it in one point in their career or, or many points maybe in their career that they can make it, even if you have the time for it, you know? Because it's difficult moments on the way. Like I say, it's a lot of things that are, are, there, are now less things because now many people is into video games and things like that. But when I used to be younger, you used, you used to be out all the time and you used to love that. And for football, you actually take a lot of that time out just to play football, you know, because you train morning and afternoon most of the time, at least at the start. And during the season, you are focusing on playing. So it has its benefits. And listen, it's the best thing that one of the best things that ever happens to me, become a footballer. But you have a lot of things that you live on the way as well for it, you know, 100%. I think it's really good for people to hear that because <clears throat> it can be very easy to get caught up in the glitz and glamour, I guess, of the outcome. So I guess my next question before we get into the amplified coaching stuff, having gone through all that adversity, you know, you made it to the Premier League, treat, achieved your dream, you know, had a career in football. When you step away from the sport, it was almost kind of like, well, life's not done with throwing you challenges, you know, in terms of health. So can you just talk us a little bit through what happens, you know, once you stepped away from football with your own health? Because that almost, again, reignites this kind of purpose, challenge and all those sorts of things that have then allowed you hopefully to go on and do wonderful things with Amplified. Yeah, well, actually what it happens is I don't believe any person the other day. I actually, I heard Tyson that I don't believe he's very clever sometimes how he talked, but actually this time he was very clever what he mentioned. And he said that, he said, you took, they asked him, I don't remember exactly the question, but about what is the, the worst drug that he ever took on his life? Because he actually, they say that he's making a lot of money from marijuana now or something like that, no? And he said, well, actually, I'm still smoking, but 
you may be thinking that actually the worst drug I ever took in my life is was cocaine, and it's not. It's you guys, and he point at the camera, you know, and 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 it's true because obviously human being for history for thousands of years we've not been used to have that amount of attention. We always been equal. Obviously, you have kings and you have other type of things in the in the past, you know. But I mean, like. Yeah, you never have this type of attention worldwide, you know, and so you are not prepared for this. So actually being a footballer, people obviously just think straight away in the money wise. And yeah, you have good contracts and you have a good life economy wise and it's amazing and obviously it's great. But at the same time, the attention, the attention you have everywhere you go, how you be treat everywhere you go because who you are, all of that, when you finish football, it kinds of get away, go away, you know, a little bit, you know, obviously I still go to Liverpool restaurants, for example, and people still recognize me and they treat me like amazing, you know, but the attention is not the same. It's not, it's normal. At the end, it's someone else in your position now. And as well as Robertson is doing so well as well. So like I say, it's very, very difficult to be a next footballer, be a next NBA player, be a next athlete in anything that you beat at the top. You know, I really believe it is mentally wise more than anything because you've been building and doing that all your life. And on the student, that routine as well to go into training, to be with your teammates, to be all that goes away completely. So you feel so empty. You know, I felt mental health issues were like you and I were talking before, obviously, this interview. Uh, I felt like, oh my God, you know, like what I'm doing, what I'm going to do now. And, and people would think, well, Jose, you have good money, you know, you can travel, you can do, obviously, before all the COVID situation, you can travel, you can do anything you want, you have enough money for that. I say, yeah, I say, I'm going to be honest with you, you are happy to do that for one month, two months, say, then your mind needs to focus on something. We are prepared to be occupied, we are prepared, we are built, you know, to, to be focused in something. And if you are not, you just go crazy. That's what you do, you go crazy. That's not me, and anyone. If you are at home all day watching TV, okay, going to a restaurant, eating nice steak at the end, you get used to it and you get bored and you go like, oh, what am I doing today? I wake up, no purpose, I have nothing to do, you know? So it's not that easy. And people that is going through mental health issues, I'm sure they, they would say that and they will understand what I'm talking about, you know? When this one doesn't work, this one doesn't work, nothing works, you are unhappy, you are the worst. So it was very, very difficult to actually become an ex-footballer. And obviously, after came a brain tumor a year after. So just to make a top of it, you know, just to make it even worse, you know. Uh, but like I said, the most important is I actually take some nice memories from all of that because it makes me, I believe I've always been a good person. I don't never believe I've been a bad person, but it actually made me grow as a person a lot all of this. To me, to my partner as a couple, it made me learn a lot in my life, this. And that's, I, I, I don't wish it to anyone, though. I don't wish it to anyone, though. But if I have to take a positive, that I actually learn a lot from it. I think that's a really important point you make there around not wishing it on people. But actually, this happens, you know, whether it's COVID, whether it's a brain tumour, whether it's a mental health issue. Everyone at some point in some respects in their life will have challenge. And actually, there's two ways you can approach it and say, you know, it's all doom and gloom and there's nothing I can learn from it. But yeah. actually, for you to say coming out of that, I've grown as a person and it's actually put you in a better place now. You know, and that kind of leads us on nicely as to, you know, you, you kind of come out, you've gone through the mental health journey of an ex-footballer. You've gone through the brain tumor journey. And now you're kind of like, right, I need this purpose into something new, exciting. And that was where this whole ampl amplified coaching stuff came about. So talk us through kind of what happened there and how that kind of started and where it is now. Well, I'm going to tell you about as well an advice for people for what we talk about mental health. And then obviously I go into Amplify. But I actually believe mental health issues are really severe, you know, because actually what I had, it was really bad. I have so many panic attacks. I wake up really bad, you know, a lot of stuff that I already talk about a lot in the past. And I really believe and the advice that I give to people is definitely find help. You know, it's people, I, it's actually, at the moment, it's actually what people, is actually realize how important mental health is. Maybe 10 years ago, 12 years ago, people were, weren't as 
maybe listening to it, maybe people thought maybe that was just crazy people actually with the, that have mental health issues. And, and actually it's not. Anyone can have it and find help for it. That's what I did. And that's what it helps me grow as a person as well. Finding the right person that is really helping me that I still going to help, you know? And obviously for all of that as well, here it comes amplified, you know, that actually for me, exercise is something that is key in my life. It's key. I always done exercise in my life. It's been obviously football since I was younger. But actually when a, a football is tough for me, I just want to play when I play for the Legends. I don't play anymore, you know, because it's like with my knee and everything like that because I couldn't play at my level for so long, you know, and I suffered so much with my knee. I just got fed up actually with playing football. I love watching it. You know, I love to watch Liverpool. I love to watch football. But actually playing, I'm not playing as much. You know, I just play with actually when I'm on with the legends and I love it then because it might remind me when I used to play. So it's amazing. But obviously after all of that, I remember me and Steve, we jump in a private session. I never met Steve before. And, and we jump in a private session that was, it was through, through LFC. And, and I thought, well, it's a hit session. This I never done hit before. And I thought, oof, high, high interval, safe. I'm not sure about it, but I say it's from LFC, so let's give it a go, no? And I done it, and I remember he actually killed me. You know, that session, it, was, it wasn't just for me. It was for, obviously, a, a, a lot of people. But I was like, oh, my God, this. And, and in a weird way, it reminds me of my playing days. You know, when I used to finish a game of football, the day after you feel more or less okay, but 48 hours after you feel like, oh, my God. I, I, even my ear is hurting, you know, it, everything, you know? So, in a way, I enjoy it. And I was like, oh, and I love it, Steve, from the session. I love it, how he's done it, how he approached, how he motivated people. And I was like, oh, I like this guy. So, I actually make a post about the session. And me and him, actually, since then, we've been in touch. Actually, obviously, he's working for another company because, obviously, Amplify is still building. But me and him, we say, in one point, we say, well, we don't do something together. I say, I really believe, obviously, for... The, the person I've been, I really believe I can attract people and I can really make people be inspired for who I've been and for what I've been going through in my life. And I really believe you can do your other, the other 50% on this that is inspire people and motivate people and really make people into exercise. You know, that I really believe it can help any type of age because actually mental health, kids have it, older people have it, doesn't matter the age, is everywhere. So... And actually came from all of that, you know, and, and actually it's something that I, I'm not even sleeping well at the moment with how much I'm thinking about stuff doing on the platform, you know, me and Erhim is the same, Amy, my, my partner just starting the yoga sessions as well, you know, she, she's doing it on Mondays and Wednesdays as well, and she's thinking all the time as well in doing something, Corinne, that is uh, Steve's wife, take, take care of all the Zoom sessions that is me and Steve on it, so actually it's like, a family business that is actually not a business. You know, it's something that both of us dream. It's, it will be a dream come true to actually make this massive, to help as many people as possible, you know? I think um, there's a, a great saying of find what you love and you never work a day in your life. And I think people watching this discussion so far and Steve's interview last week will actually be able to see this is so much more than you know, just what we would regard as a business. It's something you're so passionate about and it's it's part of who you are and obviously by extension, your your family. And I think that's a really nice thing because one of the the challenges, I guess, in the business world is authenticity and actually yeah. being true to who you, who you are. So that was kind of why we wanted to kind of explore these stories with you guys to actually hear the story and actually go, this is so much more than just, you know, the fitness element. There's actually this whole mental health journey, our passion, our beliefs and our life journey all twisted into it. So it must be kind of exciting to see it, you know, live and out there and the people using it. Yeah, for, for what we're doing at the moment, obviously we're still growing, you know, and, and actually behind the scenes, we are doing some stuff that I really believe, hopefully in the next month or two, you know, we're going to have some uh, private sessions concrete as well, with foundations and things like that, that is going to be really nice. But at the moment, talking about with the people that are working at the moment, it's amazing, you know, how excited they are, how much they are putting to the classes. 
actually one person that works for LFC that's a very good friend of mine, uh, Chris. Uh, I remember he's obviously because of all the COVID situation and everything, he was into, you know, like no, no exercise, you know, like many people because of the COVID, you don't fancy to do anything. You just stay at home and work and that's all. And I remember starting the, the sessions and I say, Chris, you need to jump on the session. I say, Jose, today I'm really busy. This I say, listen, you are a friend of mine. You know, you don't have to. I say, but I'm putting him a sample because it's so many samples, but one of them, you know, that it makes you so happy. You know, it makes me so happy. It makes Steve so happy. It makes Amy so happy. It makes people, the people that we are doing this for, you know, it makes us all happy, you know. It's, and it's like, okay, Chris, just it's half an hour of your time. Between warm up and the session, it's gonna be half an hour. It's no more than your time. Just give it a go. Say no, but maybe it's too hard. I say no. He actually, we do something that no one else does. That is, uh, Steve does the advanced session, and I do the beginners. So, in any point, you can change to advanced, or you can change to beginner, or stay all the time in beginner, or all the time in advanced. Because actually, the screen going to you know, and you can see Steve and mine, and we always give two options. So, don't worry, you're gonna be fine. And at the start, just follow me. That is the easiest exercise. And then if you feel like it, that you can follow Steve, follow Steve. Well, all of this actually came. He's done it, the session. And he said, Jose, just, that's what I needed to start. That's all I needed to start. And now he's actually coming into three sessions per week, you know, because it's when he comes in the morning. He's going for power balls. This morning I talked to him and I said, I'm going to do, because I, actually I have the hit session nine in the afternoon with Steve. But I wanted to do one this morning and I talked to him and I said, what are you doing? He said, actually, I'm going for a power walk now with the dog. That he wasn't doing that before. And he said, and tomorrow I will join the heat session. He said, Jose, and like any English person, most of the English guys, you know, they love his beer. Actually, he's going to do a 20 white day without beer, without any alcohol, you know, as well, because he wants to lose weight. He's saying his mental health is much better since he started joining us. So that is what made me happy. You know, that's what actually brings satisfaction to us. Because people, like you say, you can't think this is a business. And it is, don't get me wrong, it is. But I actually, if I'm completely honest with you, Kevin, and Steve know that, and I don't really need this, you know, to, to, to go well for me to be okay, economy-wise, thanks God, you know, because of what I did in football, agency work is going really well for me. This actually is a business, if you, because you have to call it a business, but it's actually something that, like you say, it makes me really happy to do. You know, it's, it's something that is no work for me. Listen, don't get me wrong, I love my football agency thing because I still in, in, in involved with football, but this is something else because I believe, and I can see in people's faces, I believe because I've been going through mental health issues myself, I can see in some people, you know, when they join the sessions, and you can see their faces when we completely finish the session and we have a Telegram group and they come in the Telegram group after as well, how happy they are, they are ready to go in the day and everything. That's what really is driving me on to actually do this, you know? So it's really, really exciting times. And like you say, hopefully we make it as big as possible because we want to get as many people as possible. Brilliant. There's a couple more things I want to ask. Looking back across your journey, you obviously had a lot of experiences through the different levels of sport, but you probably had a lot of experiences at different levels as a person as well. So what kind of skills um, and experiences did you take from your footballing years that you now apply in the, the business venture that you're doing now? You know, were there any particular things that you look back and go, that's really helped me now? I think I, as the problem, I'm going to tell you something, uh, as a footballer, not all footballers, we're talking a high profile footballers because football, when they think in footballers, you think, for example, in the second division footballers here in Spain, they have to do a good career actually in second division and playing good in second division to actually earn enough to actually sort their life after. What you have to realize, they have to build a business after, they, they, they are privileged anyway, but they actually, they're not going to be sorted economy-wise for their life. So what I'm saying with this is that actually when you play football and more at the highest level, you really, you have everything done for, you know? When I was in Liverpool, he said, no, I want a restaurant. And you speak with the club and they show you the reservation, the table, the best table, the best. So actually when you play football at this level, you actually 
don't learn much in terms of what life is really. I learn a lot more after it, to be honest. And when I retire, in terms of life, meaning, in terms of person, I grow so much as a person, I meet so many good people, you know, you grow in because when you obviously get older, you learn, okay? But it's true that when I retire, because obviously it's a lot less time that I retired that I play football, I retired five years ago. So obviously it's a lot, I play a lot more time in football. In them five years, I'm telling you, I learn a lot more about myself and a lot about more life that I learn out of football because actually, as a footballer, you have everything done for them. More when you play at that level, they sort you out in everything you need because what they want you is to focus just in football. And the problem, that's what happened. When you retire, it's like, okay, I have a problem with the internet in my house. It looks, it looks something very, very silly, but I need to call myself the guy come here, doesn't sort it, the bills, the, and you have to all sort yourself. When I was in Liverpool, he said, Listen, I need internet in my house. Don't worry. In two hours, you have them in your house. Like I said, you don't live a real life. When you're a footballer, talking about that level, talking about a high level, you know? So I actually learn a lot more after this for what all happened to me. Mental health, the brain tumor. I learn a lot more in my ex-footballer life than actually in my football life. But don't get me wrong. As a footballer, I made so many nice people. And I get so many good advices from people that were older than me that actually I take now as well. Fantastic. Well, I've got one more thing, I guess, to pull this all together. That I guess the whole point behind what you're doing with Amplified is you're looking to get people started on this health and well-being journey to actually take ownership over looking after their mental well-being as well as their physical well-being. So if you had to give now being on this journey yourself, you know, the highs and the lows along the way, what would your one message be to everyone out there who's, sitting on the sofa and thinking, well, maybe, I'm not sure. What, what would your message be to those people? My message is very simple. It's say, are you happy in the sofa? That's the reality. Are you happy all day in the sofa watching TV? You feel well? I'm sorry you don't. I, I, no one does because human being is not prepared to be sit down in the sofa all day. I'm talking more, obviously, in normal situation, maybe we go to work. For even then, maybe you are sitting down for eight hours. Some people that work, obviously, a lot of people work in the laptops at the, in any type of job, you know, at the moment, because of technology and everything goes to internet and all of that. So my question is, are you actually happy? Or if you are okay, no happy, no unhappy, you believe if you introduce this into your life, you can be happier? I believe you can. Why you don't give that? Oh, it's half an hour. It's no more than that. Just give it one session. Are you, that's what I always ask people. Just give it one session ago and let me know how you feel after. And if you feel different, I'm sure if you are honest with yourself, I will say the 100%. But not to say the 100, 98% of the people after the session will say, oh my God, I loved this. I really enjoyed it. I really want to do this again. It makes me feel great. That's the end of it. Because like I said, we focus on that, so, okay, in hip, I want to look better and everything. Obviously, everyone will want to look better. Uh, obviously, I don't have hair, but you do, and you look to like nice, and you put your gel, and you put, you know, like, we like to look nice as well, but mental health with the sport is so related. And I really believe if you don't move and you don't do any that, obviously, in Amplify, and I'm obviously going to encourage people to do hit or yoga because actually that's what we actually do in the platform, but it's actually any type of exercise. Do it and let me know how you feel after it. You know what I mean? That's the message. Just give it a go. And I'm the first one. I wake up this morning. I have a heat session this afternoon. But I am a person that I need exercise, you know, for my mind to go, you know, and set up, you know. So I wake up and I was like, oh, my God, I'm dead. I have another heat session in the night. I'm going to just rest. And then I went, I'm going to do it. And I felt so great. I have some calls. I sort out some things that I need to do. I actually talked to some players as well. And I have a, such a successful morning that I'm so proud of and happy. And all starting, waking up and say, okay, let's do that heat session that I really want, no want to do, but I nearly have to do for me. And I did it and I feel great. So that's my message. Give it a go, 100%. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your time this morning, Jose. It's been really, really enjoyable and looking forward to following where it goes next, because like you say, we're still growing and getting started, but actually there is this vision to, to impact a lot of people around the world. So I'm really looking forward to it, but thank you for your time.
Thanks to you, Kevin. Thank you for that as well. Thank you again, Jose. Some incredibly powerful insights there, and I know I've certainly taken a lot away from that discussion. I think it's great to hear more people speaking openly about their own mental health challenges, and we've got more in that vein coming up in episode 39 when we speak to a serving firefighter and war veteran. Stay tuned for that. Make sure you check out Amplified Coaching Online as well as Jose and Steve's pages, all of which we've linked in the show notes. As always, we'd really appreciate it if you can give us a quick rate and review on whatever platform you're joining us on today, and please share the show with your friends. Check out our website, theroguemonkey.org, if you want to find out more about what we're up to besides the podcast. Coming up in episode 36, we speak to Emmy Awards winner Clint Pulver. Another really powerful episode. Thanks for joining us today, and see you again soon for another episode of the Rogue Monkey Podcast.